when you love two things as much as I do love farming, it's difficult to choose. But I could not see myself functioning without either of them. <laughs> I'm on my farm in Ebony Park, Breadnut Valley. It is part of an agro park which is located in the area, the Ebony Park Agro Park. Who is Dr. Watson? Well, Dr. Watson, I like to say, is a country boy born in West Kingston <laughs> in 1966. Grew up in the hills of Clarendon. My family settled in a district named Orange River. I'm married to a country girl from Mount Moriah and St. Anne's. We have two kids. <laughs> I went to Clarendon College. I'm a member of the class of 83, a very cordial group <laughs> and a very productive group, a very patriotic group. I love sports. I love cricket. I still play my, my cricket. I play a lot of masters cricket around. I'm as much known as a doctor as, as known as a cricketer. I played Deadly Cup for five years. You won? Any? We never won. I thought one year we would have won Deadly Cup, you know, but we were kicked out of the competition for no, for no good reason. And I'm sure that year we would have beaten Stets, so a long time rival. <laughs> I played schoolboy cricket for five years and the only schoolboy team that ever beat us, including teams from the urban area, was St. Elizabeth Technical High School. And those guys were still very good friends with our rivalry in Masters Cricket lives on. I went to, um, I went to the National Youth Trials in 1985. I wasn't successful in making the national team at the time. And, I, and that might have caused me to, um, yeah, to decide it. to go and study because I realized then that you could not play sports and be successful playing sports in Jamaica as an un unemployed person. Because our sports, cricket at least, is not, wasn't a professional game at the time. You could not make a living from playing the game. So you would look, seek other options. So I went away, I studied as, as medicine in Cuba. A man came back, resumed playing cricket, and if it wasn't for an injury then I thought I would have made the national team. I'm a very outdoors person, so it was only natural for me to have a significant outdoor activity. And what better outdoor activity to have other than farming? In farming, other than just enjoying being in the outdoors, it is a source of income. So it serves two purposes. Firstly, I got the land to lease from the Agro Invest Corporation, which is a government agency. I've been farming in Ebony Park for upwards of eight years, although I used to farm in other areas before. We get the land to lease and we are supplied with irrigation water through the National Irrigation Commission. Because going into farming without water makes no sense. You have to, you have, to have irrigation water. It can be challenged in terms of the NIC meeting the demands of the farm, but in, for most part we are able to survive on the water that we do get. My philosophy of farming is mixed agriculture. So I mix perennial crops, tree crops like avocado, coconut, ackee, with catch crops like mainly hot pepper, West Indian red hot pepper and skellion. I also do cassava and I will plant any crop I have a market for because for most most crops it's just about learning the correct husbandry and doing what needs to be done. Okay you said as long as you have a market but you do your practice so when do you get time to look market because I think your doctor think take up most of your time right? Yeah. I'm a member of the Ebony Park Agro Cooperative 2016 Limited. We do most of our marketing through Ebony Park Agro Cooperative as a group. It makes it easier because then we can package our stuff and deliver them as a group. And that makes a more efficient use of time. Because as you rightly said, I would not have the time to, to do all the, the deliveries. Generally, especially in the summer months when the mornings are quite long. I would be on my farm from like five o'clock and might be spend two to an half hour and then I get home, get ready and rush to work by eight. And so when 
in the shorter months now, sometimes I have to go to the gym because <laughs> it's not possible to come to the farm to do my, ex my early morning exercise because I do work on my farm. There are some crops that I planted earlier which I would not plant them again even though I have them. Like June plum because they are not readily marketable. Breadfruit, it's not readily, readily marketable. And the markets are very seasonal and these are and it's a challenge to market crops like those. So I've progressively shift from those crops into coconut, which is a much more marketable crop. I got into coconut production because of a friend who had a coconut water factory and he had to go to Portland and the hills of St. Catherine to get coconut for his factory. So he encouraged me and got me the first set of coconut suckers to get into coconut production. Well, jelly, because jelly is the main thing I sell. I do sell some dry coconut, but mainly jelly. He buys from me at regular intervals. And we have other market like the little jelly man on the corner. I do a lot of sales to, to those persons as well. How will being a medical doctor assist you as a farmer? Well, being a medical doctor, you know, we learn a lot of biochemistry and mechanism of how things work. You become very aware of 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 how of how things work and what and what they do. You you know that for example I try to be to use use bioselective substances. That's a concept that you would have learned a lot in medicine. Where for example a spray is not just a spray. A weed side is not just a weed side. If, for example, you have a field that is full of grass and, and, and your plant, the plant you're having is not, is not related to the grass family, knowing that there's a bioselective weed side that could get rid of the grass and possibly cost you less than doing it using, using, lay, using manual labor like people weeding can be very helpful. So being trained as a doctor, I think, puts me in a position where I can actually be more scientific in my approach to farming because an animal which are a part of is a living being, a plant is just another living being. So a lot of the concepts that would apply to taking care of a human can be applied to taking care of plants. You have been in this for eight years. How long have you been a doctor? 24. Okay, what lessons have you learned along the way? With the COVID challenge and the need for social distancing, some of my colleagues has, has encouraged me to, to host meetings on my farm. And it, it has been going very well so far and we have had two meetings and we'll be having a next one because of popular demand. <laughs> because it's an outdoor area so we, so in future, as I, I, I remember when I applied for the land to lease for me, I see, you know, part of my plan was was to um, include some amount of entertainment on the farm. So I plan to might be in the not too distant future have a few cabanas for rent and things like that. And might be, be able to host events like weddings and so on in the future because it was always part of my plan. So when they asked me for this, I said, oh, this is a training opportunity for me. If I should ask you which of the two professions you love the most, what should you say and why? Well, when you love, when you love two things as much as I do love farming, it's difficult to choose. But I could not see myself functioning without either of them. <laughs> From what you have been doing over the eight years, any insight, any advice? Well, when you get into farming, you have to be open to learn. I read as much about farming as I do about medicine in order to keep up to date. There are always new substances coming, new pesticides coming in that you have to learn about. Just like in medicine, there are always new drugs, things like that. So it is important for you to come with an open mind. Make sure that you are prepared to work. Make sure that you are prepared to, to ride it out when things are tough. Because in, in agriculture and farming, the difficult times are are many. Whenever you hear of a trough or a tropical depression or a hurricane coming, <laughs> you know that that is a challenge. That's a challenge in time because quite often after those natural events, 
even more so than a drought you it's like you have to start over again and you could have a have a feel and you're counting the profits from that potential profits from that field and with, with within 24 hours of a good shower you would have lost and you have to pick up the pieces and start again so two things you have to be you have to be prepared to to rally back after the setbacks and you have to be prepared to read and to learn and to make use of traditional information from from people who generally farm in the area you start in your farm you have to make certain you establish a good relationship with your extension officer that is your radar extension officer and remember one thing treat your workers well if you have loyal workers you are, might be halfway into having a successful farm without loyal workers you will never have a successful farm